Takeaways are a guilty pleasure whether they're enjoyed on a Friday night or reheated the next morning. But for many, takeaways come from grubby fast food joints that nobody has ever really heard of. What if you wanted to tuck into some restaurant quality food from the comfort of your living room? Well, when Deliveroo was founded in 2013, that all became possible as the online food delivery company teams up with well-known restaurants that lack a delivery service, making it a match made in heaven. Founded in the UK by two Americans, Deliveroo has seen revenue growth of 650% year on year and has created thousands of jobs through the gig economy. Now it's IPO'd, it's easier to place a valuation on the business as it comes under scrutiny from investors around the world. But what is the story of Deliveroo and how did they become one of the fastest companies to reach IPO operating in over 10 countries with 140,000 restaurants? Here's how it happened. Deliveroo was founded by Will Shu in 2013, but the idea for the food delivery company stemmed from his career in finance. Shu previously worked for Morgan Stanley and was working 100 hours a week, so ate pretty much every evening meal at his desk. When he relocated to the London office from New York in 2004, he felt the dinner options were poor and he got sick of shopping at the local Tesco. The idea of fast food delivery was perfect as bankers often don't have time to leave their desks for dinner. But it would take another nine years to launch the business as Shu waited for the technology to catch up with his idea. The competitors at the time were Just Eat and Hungry House, but those both didn't really have any recognisable restaurants and you couldn't track the delivery, so you didn't know when your food would arrive. Together with Greg Orlovsky, a friend and software developer, Shu launched Deliveroo with mobile technology, helping drivers to navigate their delivery routes and accept orders. Orlovsky worked on the software while Shu worked with restaurant chains to partner with. And during the first 10 months, Shu delivered food himself pretty much every day. Some of his old colleagues even pranked him by ordering food through Deliveroo just to see him turn up as a delivery boy, even delivering a pizza to his old boss who thought he'd fallen to an all-time low. Shu's idea for the business was premium food delivery and now they offer 30 minutes between your order and the knock on the door. They work with an army of 110,000 bike and moped riders and a whole community of restaurants. Their algorithm, called Frank, uses predictive technology to get the most efficient way of distributing orders based on location and they use this to streamline delivery routes, making the process more efficient, meaning riders, restaurants and delivery make more money, and the customer receives their meal faster and, crucially, warmer. Shu's thinking was that if you're able to tell the restaurant exactly when the delivery driver will turn up, then they know when to start cooking, which means the food will be piping hot when they do turn up. A technology company at their core, Deliveroo was looking to grow quickly, and just one year after it was founded, Deliveroo raised $2.75 million from Index and Hoxton Ventures, which helped with expansion and saw the firm launch in Brighton, followed by Paris and Berlin a year later. By late 2015, Deliveroo had a presence in 30 cities and was worth around $600 million. But this lofty valuation drew attention to their riders, who were now seen everywhere in their fluorescent blue jackets, but weren't employed by the company, rather through the gig economy, which meant Deliveroo could offer low pay and weak job security, raising concerns which would come back to bite them in the future. After Orlovsky left the firm in 2016 to launch a new venture, Deliveroo shifted its focus to help restaurants process more takeaway orders by creating mini kitchens based in shipping containers in car parks to increase a restaurant's output. These are known as Deliveroo additions, but are widely known in the market as ghost kitchens to help restaurants deal with an increase in takeaway requests. Deliveroo are able to go from zero to fully functioning restaurants in just eight weeks without the upfront costs of a high street location and backed by analytics which show the best location for the addition kitchen. By 2017, Deliveroo was very much a unicorn business, valued at over $2 billion, with investment from Fidelity and T. Rowe Price. But they faced increased pressure from UK councils regarding their ghost kitchens, and the government and unions regarding labour rights. Despite interest from SoftBank and Uber, it was Amazon who participated in their 2019 funding round which valued the business at over $4 billion and led to the expansion into the USA. But the UK Competition and Markets Authority actually halted the deal as they were concerned that Amazon and Deliveroo would dominate the market. However, after struggling at the start of 2020, 
Deliveroo needed the Amazon funding just to stay in business, and it was later approved. Once people became more comfortable ordering food during a pandemic, Deliveroo expanded quickly, announcing a partnership with Aldi and adding over 15,000 riders to cope with the surge in demand. They finally reached some quarterly profitability in 2020, but still made a £220 million loss during their busiest ever year. But how does Deliveroo actually make money? Delivery fees, service fees, onboarding fees, subscriptions, and cloud kitchen sales all act as revenue generators for the business. They take a meaty commission of around 25% per sale. Customers also pay a fixed fee of around £2.50 for delivery, which is then used to pay the driver, and restaurants also pay an onboarding fee of around $300 to actually join the delivery platform. Deliveroo Plus was then launched as a subscription fee to allow customers to get free delivery on orders over £10, as well as better customer service which costs around £12 per month. As the firm has grown in valuation and revenue, Shu was keen to IPO in order to create a return on investment for their early investors. And by the beginning of 2020, Deliveroo were valued at $7 billion after their Series H funding round. But their IPO, which was designed to raise more capital to push into the grocery sector, was described as one of the worst in London's history, as the share price fell 31% on the first day, wiping £2 billion off its valuation from its £7.6 billion starting point due to regulatory concerns, issues with their gig economy workers, and a lack of profitability. Despite avoiding all gig economy punishment in the past, a recent Uber court case could change the game for the gig economy, which might mean Deliveroo has to view its riders as workers rather than self-employed, which might be curtains for the business. It's clear that Will Shu solved the problem with the food delivery market, and Deliveroo offers a premium experience to match their premium restaurant partners. Working with over 140,000 restaurants with over 110,000 riders, it's fair to say their growth has been impressive. But concerns remain over their gig economy workforce and their inability to turn a profit. But that hasn't stopped successful companies in the past. Just look at Uber. The future of Deliveroo then could be self-driving delivery robots, or it could grind to a halt if they burn through all their cash. What do you think will happen to Deliveroo? Leave us a comment below, and while you're there, let us know what you'd like to see in future videos. Thanks for watching.